everyone, welcome to a new video. So today we're going to be talking about why I don't follow the curly girl method. I get asked so much on my social media how long I've been on my curly girl method journey and when I respond with I actually don't follow the curly girl method, I get a ton of you guys saying, but your hair is so healthy, how come you don't follow the curly girl method? So I decided to make this video on the reasons why I personally don't follow the curly girl method and why you also don't need to follow the curly girl method to have healthy, shiny, and bouncy curls. Obviously, if the curly girl method works for you, then continue going ahead and doing that. I just personally feel like there are a ton of myths and things that just aren't the best with the curly girl method, which is the reason why I don't personally follow it. But like I said, if it works for you, keep on doing you. So I'm going to list a few reasons as to why I don't follow the curly girl method and I will link a few sources down below in the description box where I found some of this info and I also did my own personal research and some of this is my own personal opinion as well. The first reason why I don't follow the curly girl method is I don't really agree with their one size fits all mythology. Basically with the curly girl method, if you're not familiar, a lot of rules are just that, rules. It doesn't matter your porosity, your density, your texture, your length, everything else, it doesn't matter. They have don't do this, don't do that, and just a ton of blanket statements that are supposed to work with all different hair types in the curly girl method. And I just genuinely don't believe that's physically possible. Every head of curls are different. Your porosity is different, your texture is different, your length is different, even your color is different. Those all need different things. So to say that all of these rules fit every single curl type and texture, to me, just doesn't work. Number two, I don't believe that co-washing exclusively is healthy for your hair. Co-washing in combination with shampoos and clarifying washes can be beneficial if you are having to wash your hair more often than you want to without overstripping your hair. But when you're just co-washing, you're just cleansing your hair and scalp with conditioner. Nothing is actually being cleansed and properly stripped away like dirt, oil, product, anything else that could be lying in your scalp is not getting rinsed and washed away. And over time, after you've done co-washing repeatedly without shampooing or clarifying, your scalp gets more and more built up. Now our hair follicles don't like being built up. Over time, your hair follicles will become suffocated, which sounds so scary, and it is. Your hair follicles eventually will get so suffocated that they won't have the room to grow and they will eventually die, which causes hair loss. This is a main, main issue with a lot of people that follow the curly girl method. They'll do it for a few months, maybe get good results. Over time, they will say that their hair is thinning, their scalp is very oily, and their hair starts to fall out. That is because co-washing is not actually cleansing your scalp. Number three. Silicones are bad. Silicones are not bad. You cannot generalize and put a blanket statement over things like silicones. The silicone molecule is very large and it can actually allow water to penetrate, which is one of the main reasons as to why they say silicones are bad for your hair. They say that silicones clog your hair and don't allow moisture to properly penetrate your hair and it allowing your hair to dry from the inside out. This is false. Silicones actually can help protect the hair, especially on damaged hair, and it actually can be washed out with a non-sulfate shampoo. That's another reason why silicones are deemed as a no-no ingredient, that they cannot be cleansed without using an incredibly stripping and drying shampoo with sulfates. We'll get to sulfates in a sec, but that is all false. If you haven't seen Main by Mel's video comparing sulfate and sulfate free shampoos on silicone products and if they both will wash out, I highly recommend it down below. But basically, her foundings were that silicone still comes off even when you're using a sulfate free shampoo. So don't be afraid of silicone. Number four, sulfates are bad and stripping for your hair. Again, Sulfates is such a general term. There are so many different types of surfactants. There are even ones in your sulfate-free shampoos. They're just more gentle. 
It really comes down to the people that created Curly Girl Method and the people that follow Curly Girl Method are not hair care formulators. So to single out one ingredient and say that it's bad is impossible because the formulation is what matters, not just the single ingredient. When a sulfate product is combined with moisturizing oils, butters, and creams, you can still have a very cleansing shampoo without overstripping your hair. Now, I personally sometimes will use a sulfate shampoo, other times not. It's really just a personal preference to you, but there is no reason to demonize a one ingredient like sulfates out of your entire skincare routine because someone says it's dripping or drying. Number five, brushes are bad for your hair. Again, brushes can be an amazing tool. I cannot live without my Denman brush and my detangling brush in the shower. I see so many people demonizing the brush, saying it'll ruin your curls, it'll destroy your curl pattern, it'll break your hair, and so much other incorrect information about brushes. The truth is, yes, a brush can be damaging. Yes, a brush can break your hair off, but only if done incorrectly. When you're using the Denman brush on a wet, hair with product and gently defining your curls, it can be an amazing tool. It definitely will not damage your hair. Same thing goes with brushing your hair to detangle. If you have a looser, wavier curl pattern and you're super gentle, starting at the bottom, dry brushing is actually fine. Even I dry brush sometimes with the right brush. And of course, detangling in the shower with a very gentle wet brush or detangling brush, starting from the bottoms up with some good conditioner, with some nice slip, is a must for me. I genuinely don't get how people can just exclude brushes entirely from their routine, especially when it comes to detangling. Ain't nobody got time to finger detangle your hair, at least not me. And last, their cult-like mentality. This has to be one of the first red flag reasons why I do not want to associate myself with the curly girl method. People are mean. They treat it like this crazy cult that if you don't follow something or if you mention something, you're deemed bad. I used to be in a few Curly Girl Method Facebook groups. This is where the viciousness is created a lot of times. A lot of these groups will demonize certain words, ingredients, even if you just aren't sure if a product is approved or not. You can mention shampoo and literally be banned from these groups, which in my mind is just crazy. You should be allowed to talk about something if you're talking about curly hair. You shouldn't be banned from mentioning the word shampoo. I've been even in a group where I got removed from mentioning the word protein treatment. A little crazy, don't you think? And especially these admins of these groups seem like they have this hierarchy dictatorship mentality of these curly girl method groups. If you say one thing that they don't like or mention a product that they don't like, you are gone. This just is not okay. Curly girls should be allowed to embrace different products, techniques, ingredients without being judged because at the end of the day, your hair is different than mine. So what works for me may not work for you and vice versa. We should not be demonizing each other and ingredients that we're not that knowledgeable about. But Shelly told me that sulfates are bad, so they must be, right? Wrong. Do your own research. Don't just base it on someone else's experience. So if sulfates don't work for you, that's fine. But don't decide on something that you don't know enough about because someone else told you to. And that is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope this helped you out on explaining why some things are demonized and seen as bad or not approved in the Curly Girl Method and why necessarily that's not a bad product, ingredient, or thing to do. Let me know down below if you used to follow the Curly Girl Method and you don't anymore and why. Any other reasons why you don't follow the Curly Girl Method, let me know down below. As always, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and hit the subscribe button and the notification button because I will be making new videos every single week. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!